Okay, there we go, guys. Looking pretty good. Got Susie Q to be the line master here. Yeah, look at those fries. You got the Polish there. Yeah, Polish and the dog I've never seen out. fries like that. It must be some special... They call them Sidewinder fries. Sidewinder. DJ Wonder Chrissy at it again and it's Sunday February 4th and um, got a good kind of we always have a good show for you guys um, let me get this set up here for you first got a variety of good topics here thought-provoking topics for you um, the first one we're going to talk about is, um, this happened a, a while ago, but I'm hearing the TSA is um, expanding their facial recognition. Can you say authoritarianism? Can you say government overreach? Can you say um, uh, privacy invasion? Can you say China? China? Yeah, um, that's what's going on at the airports, and you need to know that you can opt out of this nonsense. Otherwise, you're heading down the path to uh, authoritarianism and socialism real quick, real quick. So let's watch this video, and then we're going to have um, some interesting happenings in the Denver area. Um, as they're pushing people out into the streets, um, other counties, such as Colorado Springs, are um, getting ready to move the migrants on, basically. They're, they're coming up with an approach to keep the migrants from getting into their communities, which I think we all need to learn how to do. So uh, let's watch this first video about the TSA and its expanding of facial recognition which i'm sure you didn't hear much about from big gov right big gov ain't gonna tell you about this until you show up at the airport record-setting crowds fill airports nationwide passengers may encounter new technology at the security line at 25 airports in the u.s and puerto rico the tsa is expanding a controversial digital identification program that uses facial recognition this comes as the TSA and other divisions of Homeland Security are under pressure from lawmakers to update technology and cybersecurity. Oh, it's it's Congress's fault. That's why we have to do this. Chris Van Cleve has more. Good morning. At the world's busiest airport. And listen to this guy's excuse on what it what it's uh, offering the the consumer and why why it's such a big benefit. Atlanta. All right, you're fully verified. The TSA checkpoint has gotten a high-tech upgrade. You're going to take your ID and insert it into the card reader. Using this facial recognition camera system to compare a flyer's face to their picture on their ID in seconds. All right, ma'am, you're verified. Thank you very much. You step around. If there's not a match, like here in this demonstration, the TSA officer is alerted for further review. It's showing that the ID is a valid ID. It's showing non-match because those are two different people. We view this as better for security, much more efficient because the, yeah, the image capture is fast. And better for security and it's quicker. It'll save several seconds, if not a minute. Oh, what are we going to do with all those seconds, right? You save 20 seconds. I'm, I've just added on years to my life, I guess. Administrator David Vikoski, how does that speed things up? Well, facial recognition, first and foremost, is 
much, much more accurate. And we've, we've tested this extensively, um, so we know that it brings the accuracy level close to 100% from back mid 80% with just a human um, looking at, at a facial match. The program has been rolled out to more than two dozen airports nationwide since 2020, but is currently voluntary for flyers. Most images are deleted after use, but some information is encrypted and retained for up to 24 months. Oh, yeah. They're going to retain some of that, of your private information. Yeah. And this is what they're telling you. What are they actually doing is probably another thing. The ongoing review of how the technology performs. There are skeptics. Five U.S. senators sent this letter demand. Wow, even the Democrats are skeptical of this. Go figure. Hmm, this, this is interesting. The TSA halt the program. You don't have to compromise people's biometric security in order to provide physical security uh, at airports. And privacy advocates will Starts with taking your shoes off and your belts, and then now they're taking your face. Welcome to China, folks. Worry about the lack of regulations around facial recognition and its tendency to be less accurate with people of color. You have five senators that have called. Oh, there you go. Got a Black History Month tie in here. On TSA to stop the program. Why continue moving forward with it? I agree with them in that I want to protect privacy for every passenger and that I want to deploy technology that's accurate and doesn't disadvantage anybody. As for passengers opting to use it. This is going quick for me to do for got nothing to hide. <laughs> so no, no concerns here. I think it's great. TSA plans to add the technology to at least three more airports by the end of the year. For CBS Mornings, I'm Chris Van Cleve in Atlanta. Well, we that we have that to look forward to, I guess. Not comment down below what you think of that whole idea, and are you going to opt out, or what's going to go on with uh, with you? Now, here's the next. Uh, I, I know I'm going to opt out. I don't travel on the airplanes that much anymore, but um, I, I just see that as just totally wrong invasion of my privacy. And uh, you know what? It's like living in China, and I wanted to live. If I wanted to live in China, I would move to China. Um, so there you go. So there you go. And we got uh, SGW. Thank you for the information. Hey SGW, thank you for joining us early on a Sunday. 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 Um, it's like 34 degrees and kind of foggy here in Chicago. Our uh, snow is starting to disappear except for some piles. Um, we're going to hit 57 in another four or five days. We're, we're stuck in this rut of uh, 40 to 50 degree weather, and we're looking forward to that. So now let's get into Denver. So Denver's taking the bold step of kicking people out of their shelters um, early in the winter. I'm surprised it's so early in the winter, but they they must be running out of money big time. So um, let's let's listen to this and how one county, the Colorado Springs County, I guess south of Denver, is going to handle keeping the people from coming to their county and sucking up their resources so pay attention because you may need this in your county or your city in the near future crisis in denver is now trickling down to our area they say at least one bus of migrants arrived in colorado springs on sunday but no one will tell us where they arrived news 5's maggie bryant was at a news conference today with county leaders and maggie they say the county will not be a sanctuary for migrants diane county commissioners say they will not allocate resources to help families who come here and are calling on nonprofits to also refuse to for refuse to help but the salvation army says their mission is to there's that dreaded word again salvation army we haven't heard much about them in the Chicago area. They were involved in the migrants early on, but lately I haven't heard about them. They've got some churches involved. I think someone learned their lessons early in Chicago, but I've got an idea for the people in Denver. Revoke their business license, and maybe that'll solve it for you. Help people no matter where they come from. 
We in El Paso County must draw a line in the sand. We're not in the business of selling dreams that can't be fulfilled. El Paso Listen to that, folks. Someone with a common sense hat on. Listen to what she said. In the sand. We're not in the business of selling dreams that can't be fulfilled. El Paso County Wow. Wow, it would be amazing if all of our politicians would recognize that and decide that at some point. Um, just imagine the millions, if not billions of dollars that would save people. Leaders are making their stance clear. The spillover is now affecting our community, and it's something that's unacceptable. The county will not shelter or provide resources to migrants coming here from Denver. They say it's in the hands of the... Kudos to Fred Zeppelin. He doesn't like the red kettle stuff either i won't say what he said but it's uh yeah it's it's uh it's bull yeah it's bull federal government to secure the border keep going find a sanctuary city they asked for those folks to come to their city yeah let's make it like uh let's make it like uh what do they call those uh scavenger hunts go find your sanctuary city when we kick you out of denver Find one of those. That's where you should go. County commissioners say sanctuary cities like Denver who have promised resources to migrants are seeing a strain on shelters and law enforcement. NBC News reports 40,000 migrants have arrived in Denver over the past year. We're saying we don't want that here in El Paso County and we have the ability to say um, no. that we're going to handle it differently. The county is handling No is a powerful word, folks. Remember that. Too many parents don't tell their kids no. A lot of people are afraid to say no. But it's very, very powerful to tell someone no. And we need to do it a little bit more often. This by calling on nonprofits to not give resources to migrants who come to them for help. The Salvation Army in El Paso County says... It's There's that dreaded name again. Look, they even got the badge there. Ah! I think we've seen 23 families come through. A spokesperson for the organization says they are already helping families who arrived in the area on... Take away their business license. ...for 150 years to um, meet the needs of um, suffering humanity. Been stealing people from people for 150 years. Why should we stop, right? ...discrimination, and so we... Um, We'll continue to probably do that for the next 150 years. Wednesday afternoon, Mayor Yemi Mobilade released a statement saying, we will not invite this crisis into our city and we are not a sanctuary city. It's the city's duty to care for its residents first and that remains our top priority. Wow. We're, we're, these people in Colorado Springs have taken some common sense pills. I have not heard of politicians this common sense uh uh boosted at all my in my two months of covering this i have never heard anyone in new york city chicago or denver have this much common sense and display it all in uh verbally and written form but he goes on to say hope political grandstanding uh oh hope, that dreaded word hope hopium we need the hopium do not come here are not efficient response strategies. Oh, he's saying it's worth hope is worthless. Yeah, pretty much. If you gotta if you gotta you gotta rely on hope, you're relying on nothing. There you go. Do not come here. Uh they're not efficient. You gotta you gotta not provide for them. That's what you gotta do. Hope, political grandstanding, and simply saying do not come here are not efficient response strategies. The mayor also said the Pikes Peak Regional Office of Emergency Management is planning for different scenarios should migrants arrive unannounced. He says the agency is talking with local nonprofits to understand what resources they have available. Diane. Maggie, thank you. We also reached out to several other local nonprofits to see how they're reacting at our deadline. We only heard back from the CEO of Care and Share. Nate Springer said it is not Care and Share's business to turn anyone away across Southern Colorado. Uh oh. He went on to say the magic of Care and Share and our network is the low barrier to entry. Name, number of people in the family, zip code. Those are the only questions. We need to defund this guy. This was the first bus of migrants we know of to arrive in Colorado Springs. In Denver, it's been a very different story. Here's a look at the numbers from the city. They say just today, 
54 migrants arrived, 27 yesterday. The city of Denver says they're currently supporting more than 38,000 migrants and sheltering. They got more than Chicago, and their population is only 700,000, folks. City-run shelters this week. They've been allowed to stay in those shelters for an unlimited amount of time since November because of the cold weather. But the shelters, they're beginning to put a cap on the amount of time families can stay. Three months, November, December, January. City, 160 families were discharged just on Monday. Between 40 to 120 more, they're going to be discharged every day, they say, through the end of March. The Denver mayor's office went before city council today and acknowledged that they do not know exactly what the impacts on the city are going to be as hundreds of migrants are put back on the streets. Some of the options they're looking at include buying bus tickets or paying for a hotel. <laughs> Send them to Chicago. There's no snow there, or they got rid of their snow. Um, yeah, we don't know the impact. That sounds like coming for some liberal somewhere who just doesn't have a clue. But there you go. We don't have a clue. We're just going to throw them out on the streets. Look for tent cities to prop up again in Denver. I, I've seen uh, early in the year they had some major major tent cities going on downtown on the sidewalks and the parking lots in downtown denver tells for the migrants but that includes spending more of the city's budget today the city said it has spent about 46 million dollars on supporting migrants and providing them with shelter over five million dollars have gone to bus tickets alone wow look at that they're sending them on to other places wonder why california is flooded with the uh, homeless five million dollars on bus tickets wow if you guys want to do spring break or anything head to denver and uh you know, put on some blackface or something and tell them you, you'd like to go to Texas or wherever, Mexico, and maybe they'll give you a ticket. $46 million, that's nothing. That's what Chicago spends in one month, folks. Chicago is right now spending $46 million on illegals in one month. $17 million has been spent on hotels and lodging. City officials say on that trajectory, the city can expect to spend about 180 million dollars in 2024 this would cause the city to cut 10 percent of its entire budget stop okay so there you go that's denver um that's going to get interesting real quick um let me see if i can find you this one where um let's bring in chicago journalist what? yeah william kelly of chicago journalist who was had his press credentials revoked by Lori lightfoot he still does not have his credentials um talks about i guess uh, uh senator cruz who um from texas is gonna start uh probing into spending in chicago and maybe some of the other cities um, so maybe the feds are starting to get a little bit soft and thinking about sending some more money this way. I don't know, but they're going to do a, some uh, uh, research and probes into why Chicago is spending so much money. So let's listen to his comments. William Kelly, William, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Do this for me. Sean. Set the scene for us with what's happening in Chicago with this migrant crisis. Wow. Well, you know, this migrant apocalypse is really what uh, I'm hearing now. Uh, every Chicagoan that I talk to say that they've survived the lockdown, the looting, you know, the violent crime, and now uh, to deal with uh, this migrant crisis that will be the death knell of Chicago. This is what I'm hearing from Chicago everywhere I go. The only industry that's really thriving in Chicago is the migrant uh, industry. The migrant, you know. Go figure. The only industry thriving. Yeah, when you hear the numbers of millions, they just keep throwing around like like uh, pieces of candy. Yeah, it makes you, makes you uh, wonder why. Hundreds of millions of dollars are being spent on migrant health care, migrant housing, migrant security. You know, uh, we have uh, a contract with that we're researching right now at, you know, reporter WilliamJKelly.com. I'm doing a series of reports on the migrant money shell game, is what I call it. Uh, a, a million, uh, over a hundred million dollars 
on culturally sensitive food wow. because the migrants are unhappy with the food. You know, as an Irish Catholic from the south side of Chicago, I can't help but wonder if I snuck into a country, would I be demanding deep dish pizza? You know, um, um, yeah, and as as I know, I'm from Chicago. I love deep dish pizza. I know when I go to Hawaii or Europe or Florida, you don't order deep dish pizza it's just not the same they don't have the knowledge and the equipment to make it properly folks i, I understand on a serious note that uh you know senator ted cruz is doing uh an investigation uh a senate hearing into the misuse of funds at uh to my to house migrants at O'Hare international airport i can supply him that that should be easy to uh to resolve uh that's being done folks it has been done and continues to be done with uh, a pretty incredible story about the misuse uh, apparently from from you know what we're uh under what we're hearing what we understand thus far uh the uh misuse of COVID funds millions of COVID funds now that are being redirected to you guessed it migrants well, talk, William, about the this Kansas firm. It's not, there's a firm that I think it's, the total contract is 170. Favorite staffing, folks. But it's based yeah. in Kansas. It is a healthcare staffing firm. Yes, exactly Why right. aren't more people just chapped and chafed and just pissed off about that? Well, you know, th th thank you, Dagan. You are 100% right. This is exactly what I'm hoping Senator Ted Cruz will uh, help me help uh, uh, Chicagoans get to the bottom of in his, you know, during. Yeah, this is this is, came out back in November. They're paying a hundred thousand dollars for hotel um, room cleaning staff, two hundred and fifty to three hundred thousand dollars for security. Rent a cops and upwards of eight hundred thousand dollars for nurses. His, uh, his probe, his Senate probe, because this is the, the, every time you hear a hundred million dollars, that's a hundred million dollars per company, providing uh, a uh, providing uh, culturally sensitive meals, providing uh, housing, providing security. Uh, this uh, favorite healthcare staffing is a perfect example of this. You know, I'm starting to think, you know, maybe I could get $100 million if I opened a migrant spa. You know, we, we played the video from uh, Canada Trust. We spoke to her, I think it was last week, and she says I'm a lifelong Democrat. Uh, but the Democrats have turned their back on me. Um, I'm going to vote Republican. I, I, when you ask this question, are people going to change their leadership to change policy? And oftentimes the answer is no. Is there now a feeling in Chicago that they're begging for different kinds of leaders that may be Republicans or more moderate Democrats? Well, you know, uh, the Democrat National Convention is coming to Chicago. I'm waiting for Trump to hold a rally in Chicago. They, uh, there were some people in the, in the religious community, and I think Cata Trust was one of them. Um, urging Trump to come do a rally in the city limits of Chicago. Uh, I'm sure you know, yes. in August, the whole world will be watching. Uh, this is an opportunity uh, for, you know, a uh, governor. I can guarantee you if the border's still open, um, Governor Abbott's going to be sending some buses to Chicago during the DNC. That's guaranteed. Like uh, Pritzker, who has national ambition, to, uh, Chris Christie of the Midwest, J.B. Pritzker. Uh, to show off uh, Chicago, but as it stands right now, the only thing to show is uh, violent crime. Uh, there have been two ma uh, mass shootings in Chicago uh, right out in front of Chicago public schools where Chicago public school students have been shot dead um, uh, uh, to die on the sidewalk at lunchtime. So this is what's happening in Chicago right now, while millions... Um, word has it that Gaza has done a resolution in response to Chicago's resolution that there be a ceasefire in Israel. People in Gaza have submitted a resolution that there should be a ceasefire in Chicago. Go figure. Think about that one. Millions of dollars are being 
uh, redirected to migrants. Uh, you know, the resident homeless are, are out in the cold, literally uh, elderly, obviously vulnerable populations. I'm talking to middle class Chicagoans who said that they just can't bear this burden anymore. They can't uh, provide for a family. They have to move. They, they're telling me Chicago is doomed. Well, we're going to keep following the story. Uh, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, thank you for telling the Chicago story on the bottom line. God bless you, Sean Dagan. So, yes, Chicago is doomed. Thank you for SGW, Fred Zeppelin, and Uno. Uno, do you make some pizza? Can you make some deep dish? Um, that was one of the original deep dish pl places in Chicago, Pizzeria Uno. Maybe he's related. I don't know. Set me up with some deep dish if you can. I am DJ Wonder Chrissy. We had some long videos for you today, uh, but it was good information. We're arming you with information. We're all about the migrant mayhem. Um, check out our channel, Land Cruiser Midwest, folks, right down there over here, Land Cruiser Midwest. I, this is Migrant Mayhem. We've got a lot of cool content. Check out the car shows. We do some Chicago deep dish pizza. We do some Portillo's. Uh, we go to Wisconsin and hit some great pubs and bars and and take you some places that you would never see unless you came to the midwest don't spend much time in downtown chicago because we actually fear for our lives when we go into the city of chicago very rarely do we go into the city of chicago i don't want to take my life in my hands but anyway we're over running here so i'm going to say thank you thank you thank you like share and subscribe it does help with the algorithm we also say God bless to the United States of America, God bless to the USA, and God bless to Donald Trump. Over and out, DJ Wonder.